This morning, um, President Trump is tweeting about Republican efforts to repeal Obamacare, writing, Rand Paul is a friend of mine, but he's such a negative force when it comes to fixing health care. Graham Cassidy bill is great. Ends O-care. Senator Paul has been a vocal opponent of the plan, saying it doesn't go far enough. President Trump continued on Twitter, I hope Republican senators will vote for Graham Cassidy and fulfill their promise to repeal and replace Obamacare, money direct to states. The president's comments come as Republicans face to beat a September 30th deadline to pass Obamacare repeal bill under reconciliation, so they only need 51 votes. Uh, meanwhile, late last night, host Jimmy Kimmel had this to say. A few months ago, after my son had open heart surgery, which was something I spoke about on the air, a politician, a senator named Bill Cassidy from Louisiana, was on my show, and he wasn't very honest. It seemed like he was being honest. He got a lot of credit and attention for coming off like a rare, reasonable voice in the Republican Party when it came to health care, for coming up with something he called, and I didn't name it this, he named it this, he, the Jimmy Kimmel test, which was, in a nutshell, no family should be denied medical care, emergency or otherwise, because they can't afford it. He agreed to that. He said he would only support a health care bill that made sure a child like mine would get the health coverage he needs no matter how much money his parents make. And this guy, Bill Cassidy, just lied right to my face. Do you believe that every American, regardless of income, should be able to get regular checkups, maternity care, etc., all of those things that people who have health care get and need? Yep. So yep is Washington for nope, I guess. <laughs> and by the way, before you post a nasty Facebook message saying I'm politicizing my son's health problems, I want you to know I am politicizing my son's health problems because I have to. Wow. And with that, joining us now is Republican Senator Bill Cassidy of Louisiana. Uh, sir, I guess I will ask you to respond. Does yet mean yeah. no, really? And in your efforts to do this again, will it pass the Jimmy Kimmel test? Absolutely. There will be more people covered under the Graham Cassidy Heller Johnson Amendment than are under status quo, and we protect those with pre existing conditions. There will be billions of dollars for coverage for working families in states like Maine, Virginia, Missouri, Florida, and elsewhere. States that have been bypassed by Obamacare, but under Graham Cassidy Heller Johnson, those folks will have insurance. And there's, there's protection for those with pre existing conditions. So, any child born with a congenital heart disease would get everything he or she needs? Absolutely. Okay. But it's true, is it not, Senator, that states who get the waivers, while they may offer coverage to people with pre-existing conditions, are now free to offer them at such a price that it would become affordable, unaffordable, excuse me, to those families, which to a lot of people is the same as not having coverage at all. If I can't afford it, I might as well not have coverage. Isn't that the case? That is actually not true. Because under our bill, under our bill, the coverage has to be adequate and affordable. What does that mean we exactly? This, we run this through the CHIP program. I'm sorry, there's lots of background noise, but we are running this through the CHIP program, which is wildly uh, popular with both Democrats and Republicans. And there's safeguards both within the CHIP program that whatever coverage is offered. Uh, is, if you will, adequate and affordable, but we specifically say that it has to be adequate and affordable. Uh, by the way, let me also mention status quo. There's a fellow back in Louisiana whose daughter has special needs. He has to buy coverage, doesn't get a subsidy. He's paying over $40,000 a year plus a $5,000 deductible for his family coverage. Now, that is not affordable, and that is pricing somebody whose daughter has a pre-existing condition out of the market. Under our plan, they would be helped. But, Senator, who decides what specifically adequate and affordable mean? Those are vague terms, can mean different things to different people. Who decides what's affordable to a family? Because that's very different for family A versus family B. Yeah, that would be the Secretary of HHS. Uh, as in the Affordable Care Act, as in this bill, there's some discretion on things that are allowed. But for example, um, um, uh, we think that if you say adequate and affordable, a reasonable person would say it's got to be about the same price. Now, it's possible that someone else, someone has a different definition of affordable, but typically those people who have different definitions are trying to protect Obamacare, think it's the only way to be, and therefore they attempt to discredit our plan. But you see the fear that some <laughs> yeah. families might hear that affordable is a suggestion that could be manipulated by insurance companies as well. So it has to be approved by the Secretary of HHS. This is not left up 
to the uh, insurance company. But let me say, no one likes change. No one likes change even from worse to better. On the other hand, there's a fundamental philosophical difference. Democrats are more comfortable with power being in Washington, D.C., and individuals kind of being directed how they live their life. Republicans are more comfortable giving power back to the patient, power back to the state, with the kind of solutions that, that Americans come up with to solve our problems. We're not going to agree on some things because there's a philosophical difference in that regard. No. So, uh, Dr. Cassidy, yeah. can you guarantee that your bill will not result in people, families in Louisiana, Massachusetts, or anywhere else paying higher premiums for pre-existing conditions than they pay right now? Our families will pay less under the Graham Cassidy Heller Johnson Amendment in states like that once the governors implement their plans. But there are protections for those families. And I go back to the fellow in Louisiana paying $40,000 a year, his daughter with special needs, his premiums will be lower. So your bill, Dr. Cassidy, as I understand it, uh, Cuts coverage for low-income seniors, children, and people with disabilities. That's not true. It will explain why it's not true. So, uh, I, you, you, I'm not sure if you're, let me talk about two things. First, uh, we uh, focus the, um, the, on the, there's two pots of money. There's the traditional Medicaid and then there's the flexible block grant. The flexible block grant dollars go through the CHIP program and that has to be focused on those who begin at 50% of federal poverty level going up. States can spend it higher on the CHIP program, but the focus has to be on those from 50 to 138% of federal poverty level. So those are actually kind of focused upon. In the traditional Medicaid, uh, uh, pot. You may be referring to what is called the um, per capita cap, a proposal first made by Bill Clinton and then endorsed by people like the senator from Washington, Patty Murray, as a way to kind of give stability to the Medicaid program, but still deliver good care. It's what states do with managed care companies. We give you a certain amount of money okay. per patient. Now the federal taxpayer says to the state, you get a certain amount of money per, per patient, and the state says to the Medicaid managed care company, we give you that money. So we think it's fair, we think it's frankly consistent with bipartisan support in the past. Okay, quickly now we're back to Senator Cassidy. Uh, what do you say to people who indicate and articulate the idea, the thought, that this proposal, as with other proposals, is more about rejecting anything attached with President Obama, Obamacare, than it is about improving our health care system. You know, I, I bring to this not a thought about President Obama, but about my ethic as a physician who worked for 25 years in a public hospital for the uninsured, trying to bring health care to those who are uh, poor and working families, or even middle class families who didn't have insurance. This will bring power to that patient, power to that state, for them to have control of their health care future. That's what motivates me. Halpern? Senator, both the governor of your state and Jimmy Kimmel don't like your legislation. Are you able to win their support, or are you going to proceed without their support? No one likes change, even from worse to better. I've spoken to my governor. We both care passionately about the people in our state. But I feel more comfortable with power moving out of Washington to our state and to the patient. Again, there is a philosophical divide. Democrats are more, cons more comfortable with the federal government putting an individual mandate penalty on us, f coercing us to buy insurance, Republic which by the way, 58% of those penalties are paid by those earning $50,000 or less. Republicans think we should help those families, not penalize them. It's just a philosophical divide, but I think when they see the success of our program, uh, they'll be pleased. All right, Senator Bill Cassidy, thank you very much. Um, thank we you. have just moments left in the show. I'm wanting to get final thoughts. You can talk round and round in circles. I've gotten emails during this interview saying what the senator is saying is simply not true. It's available versus affordable versus what the governors do. It is a very comp. Why it was so hard for President Obama is why this is going to probably be impossible for Republicans in the climate in Washington now. Mark Halpern? Republicans are doing the same thing the Obama administration did. You cannot change the health care system without having consumers who are worse off than under the status quo. And like Barack Obama, Senator Cassidy is claiming no one will be worse off. That's just not true. Well, Carol? 
Um, I'm looking forward to what Jimmy Kimmel has to say because it sounds like they both are having different interpretations of the same legislation. Some 430,000 people in the state of Louisiana alone have signed up over the last year under Medicaid expansion. Mm -hmm. Their future remains in doubt. Based on this, I have no doubt that Dr. Cassidy has the best of intentions. Of course, he worked in the charity I, hospital I agree system. with you. I saw what he did around Katrina. Absolutely. But there's no question that people will lose insurance in the short term and perhaps in the long term. And Mike Barnacle. Well, he's a very nice man. There's no doubt about it. But it's incredibly depressing to sit here in a country so wealthy where we pay so much attention to walls being built in Mexico and blowing up North Korea than extending the life of a child with a congenital heart defect. Well, and but he says the child will be. Is it available Maybe. to the child? Maybe. Or is it Access. affordable? Access or is it accessible? Is and what is, important. what does that mean? This is why uh, President Obama's effort to try and fix the system and add this to the system was so difficult and so imperfect. I don't know. In my they opinion, they ought to have you psychiatric care for these people in Washington <laughs> who are so set, obsessed still with Barack Obama. What is that? It's a sickness. It's a sickness. Halpern, is it a sickness? It's a, it's it's a problem. I'm not sure I'm able to diagnose from afar. At this point, will they be successful at repealing or replacing Obamacare? Uh, my hunches are not going to get there, but um, but it's closer than I thought it would be because they're really worried about coming up completely empty. Wow. All right. That does it for us this morning. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.